guys. Good evening. Welcome to episode 12 of Tuesday Night Live. And tonight we are talking about real estate without agents, or more specifically, a technology driven transaction with less human interaction, if any. Would this be the best for one of the largest investments we ever make? Artificial intelligence seems to be taking over the world. And uh, tech companies are attempting to disrupt the real estate it, it, real estate experience. And the question is here is if we eliminate the real estate agent, are you better off or not? Hi, I'm Todd Sachs. I'm a real estate broker here at Sachs Realty. We represent buyers and sellers here in Maryland. But if you're anywhere else in the United States, uh, we can help you with your real estate needs. If you're not represented by an agent, uh, you can reach out. We have an incredible broker network program and uh, simply put guys for real estate wherever you are. Um, so um, let's meet our guest. It's Jeb Smith, and he is a real estate broker out in California with Coldwell Banker, certainly a brand that's been around for a very long time. And uh, he's been in, uh, he's actually in Huntington Beach, uh, California, which is in Orange County. And for the last two decades, he served the real estate industry. And Jeb's philosophy is centered around his clients. And kind of like myself, you know, we both strive for 100% client satisfaction and really strive to experience the best transactional experience possible in our industry. So Jeb, thank you for joining us. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I uh, appreciate it, Todd, man. Thanks uh, for giving me an opportunity to chat with you. It's uh, it's a pleasure and uh, I appreciate it. So yeah, like, like Todd mentioned, a real estate broker here in Southern California. I've been in the business for 18 years, came out of college in North Carolina, got directly into the business, um, started out early working on the finance side, in the mortgage side of things. So I have a background in finance, which has helped me as a real estate agent because I'm able to guide clients in the in the world of mortgage as well as as real estate, but I, I focus on real estate. Um, I, I was an independent um, broker owner of a small real estate company for over ten years, and actually went the the other direction. Uh, you know, worked for a Remax franchise after that, and now with Coldwell Banker Realty. And I, I transitioned for for other reasons, um, but yeah, I mean, it's I, I've been in 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 your shoes uh, and. You know, I'm I'm happy to be uh, in the in the bigger broker brand at the moment. But like you said, uh, you know, we're there's some disruptors out there which we're we're going to talk about tonight. So, yeah, we're going to have some fun with it and too. And I just want to put out there, guys. You know, um, as real estate brokers, you know, tonight's topics are not going to center around commissions. In fact, we're not going to talk about commissions at all. We're not going to talk about fees, um, and we're really not going to have. Any disparaging comments, uh, you know, from our listeners uh, or ourselves about any other companies out there, and uh, you know, real estate companies and or agents. So, you know, basically tonight, guys, <clears throat> it's it's solely based on our personal experiences, our opinions, our professional opinions as leaders, as managers in the industry, and managing agents. Um, you know, some of the things that we see. And that we're, you know, our buyers and sellers are exposed to and affected by. And uh, so we're really excited to talk about some of these hot topics. So we're going to dive right in, guys. And, um, you know, you all know what real estate agents do. So if you've bought or sold a house, um, you you probably have dealt with a real estate agent. And in, in most cases, a realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors. And, you know, we're, you know, guided by ethics and, and very high standards. And, you um, and every every day we're really seeing where these you know tech interrupters are coming in, and they're and they're really they're they're competing for you as a consumer, a buyer or seller, and um, and and we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about some of the the top ones, but uh, I'm going to dive right in. I'm going to throw uh, Jeb kind of like right right into the traffic and say, hey Jeb, are we being replaced by tech? You know, I'm going to touch on something you just mentioned a moment ago because I, I it's something that I don't necessarily agree with. You you said that most of the people out there have an idea of what we do on a daily basis as as real estate agents if you've bought or sold a home. And I find that to be exactly opposite of of what most people actually know. Uh, most people see 
reality TV, they see, you know, HGTV, they see, you know, a buyer calling to see a house, an agent negotiating it over the phone, their offer getting accepted, the world's great, maybe they do a little bit of remodeling after the fact, and, you know, all is good. And the reality is, is that's nothing um, like most transactions go, right? I mean, there's a lot that, that buyers and sellers don't see that's done behind the scenes, whether it's negotiating or or you know pushing paperwork through or just trying to make things happen in a real estate deal which we can talk about in more detail um, but but to address the question of are we being um, disrupted if you will by tech and yes I mean to some extent we are right I mean there, there's a lot of companies out there that that now have different models that allow buyers and sellers to really do their own research on properties get a lot of the information that us as agents, we used to be the provider of that information, you know, and a lot of agents held it really tight. And now it's it's out there for the public to see. Um, so yes, we are being disrupted, but I don't think we're being replaced. Um, maybe some agents will be replaced. A lot of agents will be replaced. But I think agents, uh, like you and I have discussed off camera, the agents that provide value, the professional agents that do a good job, are there's always a market for us. We'll never be replaced. Um, regardless of, of how good technology gets. And, and we can elaborate on that. But, I mean, what are your thoughts on on the disruption? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. I think the extent of what uh, the buyers and sellers nowadays are realizing, if they haven't had a real estate experience, I mean, it's certainly, you know, if somebody has bought or sold, I think they have a, you know, they've touched on some of the, the things, whether their experience was a great one or not. Um, they they have touched on, you know, a lot of uh, what does happen in a real estate transaction. And, you know, but I think, you know, the buyers and sellers out there now, I mean, they're just inundated with so many things that are on the Internet. And I like yourself. I mean, I think that um, there will be some major consolidation over the next several years. I think that, um, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that, you know, how brand really, you know, plays a big role and, you know, how the agent, the, the, the agents, the pros that really uh, find their groove and, and really accelerate in this business, I think they're going to be fine. I think, it, you know, it will certainly, you know, we'll, we'll have to learn to work along with tech and we will, um, we'll definitely see where, you know, if it's not somebody's full-time job, it may be more difficult for them you know, to play in, in the, um, you know, in, in the, the tech arena and compete um, well, because it, it does require you staying on top of it and understanding. And, and we'll talk a little bit about the importance of educating consumers, not really hiding behind it or ignoring that elephant in the room when people are, you know, and we'll talk about the iBuyer programs here shortly and explain what they are. Uh, but I think, you know, um, as professionals, we're going to have to bring that out and just bring it to the forefront and talk about it. Um, but let's talk about, um, you know, do well, to get back, do I think that we'll be replaced by technology? A hundred percent. No, I don't think that will ever go away. I would hope not. I think that as you, as we dive into this, there are a lot, a lot of reasons and guys, I I've sat down in, 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 you know, in great length preparing this podcast and, and talking with Jeb. And, you know, just kind of reevaluating where we are right now and, you know, the list of pros and cons and the pros to have a, an agent are just far outweigh the con. But let's talk about the serious issues here. Let's talk about the current disruptors, because the big thing that I want to talk about that's on everybody's mind, and I know a lot about this topic, is Zillow. And one of the reasons that I know so much about it is because I've been to their New York headquarters. We've been inside. We've actually talked. I've got a video on it. I'll provide it in this email. Um, but, uh, you know, we actually got permission uh, to bring our cameraman, Joe, our, our, our um, content creator, in with me to a uh, Zillow uh, broker um, you know, uh, meeting and where they opened up sort of like the back end and kind of showed us what they were working on and what they've been working on. And this is a, a big one that we need to talk about here is Zillow. So, you know, um, Jeb, you know, give everybody an, 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 an idea of what life was like before Zillow or you, you, you've been in for 20 years. You saw that it was about, I guess about just about that 15 years ago or so that they started uh, popping up. And uh, just kind of, you know, give some history on that. 
Yeah, I mean, so 18 years, right, is when I came in the business, so not quite 20. So, you know, it, early stages of my career, Zillow was around. I mean, it's hard to honestly believe, you know, remember a time when there wasn't a Zillow. So, uh, you know, initially when they came out, they were just a syndication fee, no different than than any of the others that are out there on the, on the Internet. The, the game has clearly changed over the years, right? Now they've become a direct competitor um, to us as agents, and, and it's only getting... Uh, more and more, um, you know, you can see the writing on the wall, right? It's it's a lot more clear that that they have become a competitor. At first, I think they started more as a as a tool um, to 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 put buyers in touch with with sellers and, and make the data a little bit more um, easily accessible. You could find what homes sold for, what bought for. You no longer needed to be on an MLS feed from an agent. Um, to see what properties were out there. You could do your own research and search areas and what have you. But now, right, they they are starting programs in markets where they're buying property. Um, recently, as, as you and I discussed here over the last, I don't know, in, in my market, this is a new addition, but they're no longer allowing us just to d- directly syndicate uh, feeds with regards to rentals at the moment um, that are on the MLS. You know, they used to just syndicate directly to to Zillow and, and potential tenants out there would see those. It didn't cost us any money, what have you. Well, now we're finding out that there's going to be a charge for that particular, um, you know, that feed to syndicate to, or actually it's not even going to be a syndication. You're going to have to go directly enter them on Zillow for them to be a part of their of their feed. So you can see that they're, you know, that in addition to them getting broker licenses in, in every state, um, which you you actually informed me about, that you know they're there to compete against us as real estate agents. So I'm actually going to throw this to you a little bit because I think you know <clears> more about you know Zillow's potential, um, you know, being more of a competitor to us than than I do. You know, so you know what what I have you know realized through the years, and I can remember um, back in I guess it was about two, 2015, 2016. 2017, there was a, um, a time when, you know, we had to really spend a lot of money in advertising our listings. Uh, you know, it was exposure was the name of the game back then. And the real estate uh, or the, um, you know, the, the internet was really getting hot. And basically we had something called a real estate book and you had to be, the, the real estate book was a little publication that would sit inside a magazine rack and, you know, fast food places or, you know, sub shops or grocery stores and things like that. And you would go in and people would pick up these, these real estate books and, you know, you would put your, you know, get a whole page out. And at the time, you know, you would go in with your, your broker because it was more affordable that way. And you could go on these different books. Now you said 2015, 16, you meant 2005 or six. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much for that clarification. Yeah. Boy, I can yeah, see okay. the comments coming in. <laughs> yeah. 2005, 2006. Gosh. All right. Um, Yeah. So basically what happened then was they came out with a digital component and that digital component was if you spent X more money on your, on your listing, you would end up on all these internet sites and there was better homes and gardens, right? You know, that brand. Well, Um, you know, it was, um, you know, Bob Vila was one of them. It was, you know, Zillow. And basically what happened is if you paid, they would aggregate that listing and they would get it out to all of the people and it was a way of you getting your client more exposure. Well, through the years, you know, um, they really gained a lot of power. And the power was that they became this platform that really America's home buyers went to, and they still do, to search the MLS. I mean, you know, back in the day, the broker would have the website with a, the MLS feed where you, people could go on and search properties. Now you're hitting the big ones in the search engines. They're spending all the money, grabbing your attention, and basically they're aggregating your data. So, you know, ye that owns the data really changes the game because, you know, they know, you know, what you're looking for. They know, you know, how often you're looking. They can tell when you're really hot or when you're so-so. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that started to happen uh, that became the biggest threats is they then became, you know, became a, a company with a model of selling those leads back to us. So, you know, sort of like, you know, hey, here we go. Now, you know, they're capturing information and they're connecting, you know, the buyer with an agent that pays money, right? In order to get that. Still advertising the listing agent because that's the rules. But really, you know, 
almost kind of like, you know, we've had buyers that have felt like they've been exploited because what happens is they don't even know what happens. They think that they're contacting the listing agent. They're, you know, in a lot of cases and they're filling out the information or being connected with an agent. And then they find out you're not the listing agent and they're really unclear why they're talking to you in a lot of cases. And, you know, and, and there's, a there, you know, and, and in many circumstances, they're getting uh, notified by multiple agents. So, you know, they're setting themselves up to be then bombarded by something that maybe was a little bit more than what they originally bargained for. Now, you know, there, we've all found ways that we can navigate through that and we really, you know, learn to embrace it and pay for the leads and, you know, and, and try and integrate that into our business. Uh, but now it keeps going. It's, it's more and more. So now Zillow, you know, they've gotten their broker license in all the states. And the reason is so now that they can deal with the, the, the local MLS directly and, you know, get all that data that they would otherwise be missing if the agents stop feeding it to them or if the MLS, you know, basically based on the, the, their agreements. Um, now they're getting into, you know, the iBuyer programs, which is really, you know, being a, you know, an, an iBuyer. And if you guys don't know what that is, you know, Google the term, we're not going to dive too much into it, but essentially what it is, is offering you cash for your house. And, you know, I'm not, you know, um, going to quote numbers and things like that, but basically it's almost like an instant offer. You put your information in, they go through an inspection process. They offer you now, you know, money for your home. They'll buy it. And essentially you can do all this hassle free, right? That's the, that's the, the ideal. Um, and we're going to pull up some slides here. And for those of you that are listening on uh, audio, we're going to kind of explain that to you in more detail. The big thing that I want to talk about right now uh, with these disruptors, I want to talk about our own MLS and realtor.com and the recent changes, because a lot of people don't know about it. And if you're in the industry, you need to know about it. Um, and let's pull up um, the slide. Um, and, you know, it, it may be hard for you guys. You might have to go on you know, realtor.com yourself. But uh, here we're going to pull up this slide here. And if you guys are familiar with realtor.com, they now have a new way um, to advise you. Um, and this is kind of crazy for me being in the industry, um, you know, uh, as a member of the MLS. So if you look here in the right hand column and what you're looking at, guys, if you're listening by audio is basically the freedom to sell your home your way. And this is a brand new kind of concept here offered by realtor.com. Um, you can either, there's four little options here. Three of them have nothing to do really with dealing with an agent. So you can list with an agent, you can sell with ease, you can sell in any condition and you can sell now and move later. And basically what they are, they're connected to um, an iBuyer, uh, you know, program that basically will give you a cash offer for your house. And in some cases allow you to just stay there and rent back. And, you know, we'll talk about the good and the bad of, the, of these things, but, um, you know, that uh, you can take that slide away. But what my point here is, you guys, we have the, our own MLS is now saying, hey, look, these options are out there. You can bypass an agent. You cannot deal with a realtor. You can just sell your house online. And, you know, this is <laughs> this is what it's coming down to. So, you know, in, in talking about, um, you know, really, are these things good? Are these things good for the consumer? Um, what are your feelings, Jeb? Um, you know, the, 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 the I'm, I'm getting all worked up over here. Um, I think the access to data is a good thing, right? I don't think that should be held tight to the chest. I think that the more information the consumer has, uh, the more informed decisions they can make. But I do believe that there's there's still room for a professional agent to help buyers understand and sellers um, understand that information. You know, unfortunately, real estate isn't just numbers, right? It, I mean, it is, but there's emotion involved. There's there's neighborhood specifics involved. There's a lot that goes into not only pricing a property, um, but selling a property. I mean, you know, while while companies like Zillow and these guys can can make you an offer on your house, you know, sight unseen, all they're doing is is computing numbers, right? So, you know, it's no different in my eyes than than going on and seeing a Zestimate for your house. Um, and you see what, what Zillow or Redfin or one of these other companies have your the value of your house listed at. 
And in, in, in California, I'm not sure what it's like in Maryland, but more often than not, that number's off by a large percentage. And what most people don't understand is that number can be easily manipulated. And, and what do I mean is that, for example, a property can hypothetically show that it's listed at 800,000. That's the value of it, 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 according to one of these companies. I can tell the, the client that it's worth 850 hypothetically go in and, and enter my listing into the MLS which syndicates to Zillow and as soon as it pops up on Zillow Zillow will change their estimate to match my number or pretty close to it so I influenced their number by changing just a you know the number on my side which tells me that that Zillow doesn't have all the answers right more often than not they're just looking at a price per square foot basis in a lot of cases and comparing it and saying, okay, your house is this many square feet. This is what it's worth. And you and I know, and any professional in the business knows, you can't, you know, in some tracks, maybe you can do a price per square foot basis and come up with the value of a home. But in California, where you've got homes that were built, you know, in the 60s, you've got townhomes, you've got condos. You've got new construction homes. You've got homes with ocean views, some with elevators. I mean, some with large lot. I mean, just a wide array of different properties. It's impossible to take technology and just come out with a number, right? And so I feel like that's one of the the main areas where it, where it falters. Um, you know, I've been in competition with against some of these these companies, these disruptors uh, that are listing property, and and heard their you know, their pitch from clients of mine that I ended up winning the listing because not only was, you know, their number off, but there was no value added, right? I mean, it was simply a numbers game to them. It was a very pragmatic um, uh, solution to to them selling their home when, when the client needed something more than that. And, and so, you know, as much as disruption is, is you know, it seems to be the, the word of, of our industry at the moment, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of Brian Buffini, and, and Brian's been talking about disruptors in our market for for a number of years. And and you know, his his comeback is or his his take is there will always be room for the professionals in the business. And I think the more that technology bleeds into real estate, the more you, if you're a professional, you're going to stand out, right? I mean, there there's value to be added um, in this business, especially when everybody thinks they have the answers. I mean, everybody needs a professional or everybody is a professional until they need one. And and, and nothing is truer in this business than, than real estate. I mean, you, you and I, um, I'll cut it off here. You, I mean, you and I were talking earlier and, and I mentioned that, you know, it, it's very easy in California to get a real estate license. It, it's, I mean, it is. It, it's, it's a pretty easy exam to pass. I'm a broker, you're a broker, so we've done additional education. Um, and, and dis, different requirements in order to become a broker, but still as a whole, you've got a lot of agents out there that, you know, that don't have the experience that um, may be in it for different reasons. And, and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of buyers and sellers end up with bad experiences because of the lack of education, the lack of experience. You know, you can just get a license and sell a home the next day. There's no process to that. And so, that's where I feel like agents could be replaced by technology, but the ones that are uh, adding value, you know, taking the the client experience to a different level, those agents are going to stand out. Those are going to be the ones when when the market changes, when you know technology changes. Those would be the people that are that are still standing around. I mean, you know, I'd love to hear what you know what you're thinking on this topic as well i mean yeah well i you know. i totally agree i mean I, I think that you know um as a consumer right i mean we're both consumers and we we both deal with technology i mean and how we buy our products i mean whether we're going to a store we're shopping online i think the biggest thing that we have to keep in mind <clears throat> is that consumers want a good experience Absolutely. they want a consistent experience and they want to win and i think you know where i see a lot of the struggles with the with some of the agents is that you know, by, um, you know, not being able to stay on top of the technology. And, you know, a big thing is with finding property. So, you know, consumers are, 
I mean, we're sleeping and consumers are on the computer. I mean, we're getting up at six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning with an email from a client saying, why didn't you show me this one? You know, well, we didn't know it was going to be put into the computer at, you know, 1259, you know, a.m. And you were sitting there on Realtor.com or Zillow or whatever. And all of a sudden, boom, you got an alert and you love it. And no, we didn't show it to you yet. Um, but I think the big thing is, is that, you know, we have to understand that if we're going to compete with technology, we have to understand what the pain points are for the consumers and what drives them to cons to the technology. So they're either going to deal with an agent that will give them a professional, consistent experience and pay, you know, really, <clears throat> you know, in their minds, you know, for a better product, right, or, and a better experience by just embracing that technology and making sure that you're educating the client and letting them know, hey, look, by the way, if you're on Zillow and you see something pop up at 11.59 or 12.59 a.m., I may not see it because it's just coming on the market, but also letting them know that a lot of the information that is on these sites are inaccurate. So, Absolutely. you know, sometimes they're behind, sometimes they're, you know, pending and they're not showing pending yet. Um, or sometimes there's other situations that are going on with it, or there's contingencies that need to be followed up with, like maybe they're going to fall through, maybe the deal is going to fall through. So, you know, understanding, you know, A, how the client is using the technology and B, selling why they need to use you along with the technology. And if you're educating, you know, getting that education from your agent or dealing with a professional they should be telling you those things that are really going to say, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, all right. So I'll take this at face value or for what it's worth, but understand that I still need you. And these are the reasons why. And we'll get into some of the things that agents do that just can't be replaced <clears throat> by technology or certainly not yet. And certainly not, you know, easily, but I think we'd be sticking our heads in the sand if we didn't say that we would lose some business to technology. No, I think because, we you know, you know, beat, we already do. And, we, and this is nothing new. I mean, there's there have been alternatives for buyers and sellers for the last 25 years or more. Right. Where you, you can not use a broker. I mean, there are certain things that you can do. You could buy you could buy a foreclosure on the courthouse steps if you wanted to. I mean, these are things that, you know, you technology, you don't need other than see where these foreclosures are. But I think that in a market that's ever more demanding or inventory is short and, and forecasts that say that that's not going to change for a very long time, we have to find a way as an industry to show that value of that they're not getting from the technology standpoint. Just like I said, if there's a house that's under contract and there's three contingencies, financing contingency, home inspection contingency, appraisal contingency. There may be a lot of reasons why that deal should could fall through right. and a professional is going to be able to navigate them through those contingencies <clears throat> and win if something happens. Um, let's talk about some of the challenges. And, and I mentioned a couple, <clears throat> you know, with them not being accurate with information, you said something about maybe their estimate if it's Zillow isn't right. And I've seen them get better, by the way. I've seen them get very good, a lot better, at least around here on, you know, using the comps and kind of getting, they're not looking inside. Sometimes they are if the house on the MLS before when it's sold, if they have a bunch of pictures inside, they can project, you know, how much it could deteriorate or not be renovated over seven or nine years. Um, remember their, their data company, but what are some of the other shortcomings that using these technologies, you know, aren't beneficial for consumers? Well, I mean, you touched on on I think the big ones is is the inaccuracies in in the data. Um, you know, is 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 data is great until it's not accurate, right? I mean, it's it's one of those things that it's very useful until it's not. And and you know, like you said, you know, homes showing as active properties when they're contingent and um, you know, in our market, it, it seems to be the Zestimates and, and even, you know, not just singling out Zillow, it's the red fins of the world that, that are doing the same thing. And I'll be completely honest, a lot of my, I mean, more of my clients use Zillow and Redfin to search for property than I actually have them on some sort of syndication feed. And, and rightfully so it's pretty, it's nice to, you know, it's, it's easy to look at. It's very easy to navigate. I mean, they, the experience quite frankly, is is a lot better than our standard MLS experience, right? I mean, I think we can all agree to that. And and so buyers want something that that is pretty and looks like that. But like you said, I think 
the value add is is an education, uh, and it it's not only an education of of the information that's being provided, but the process in general, right? I mean, it's real estate is a tricky process. Yes, some deals are very very easy to to navigate. Um, you know, people with large down payments, high credit scores, great jobs, all of that good stuff. A deal can go through very smooth, but there's a lot of deals. Um, you know, when you've been doing this as long as you and I, I mean, you encounter a lot of crazy stuff and, and really anything can happen. And there's a lot of handholding that goes into these transactions. And I, I realize I'm a little off topic here on, um, on what we're discussing, but you know, real estate's an emotional process, right? It's not just buying a home. It's not just selling a home. There's families involved. There's people that raise their kids in this home. There's a lot that goes into that process. And, you know, I've had clients list properties, we got offers, we accepted property, accepted offers, and then they decided that they didn't want to sell the property. Well, that that's very hard to navigate because they're contractually obligated at that point to do it. That's where an agent comes in. I I, mean, I was able to have conversations with with the other side, you know, just stuff like that that you don't get from from the big box companies. And when I say big box, I'm I'm referring to, you know, the guys that we've we've talked about. I'm I'm kind of lumping them all in to one big box, if you will, because they're, you know, kind of all in, in, in the same, um, arena trying to disrupt real estate and, and real estate. I mean, if we're being completely honest here, real estate has been behind for so, for so long. And, and that, you know, when it actually did come to the forefront, the data was available. People were able to find this information, you know, it, it came probably 10 years later than it should have, if not even more than that. And so, you know, it's just always been behind and, and, you know, there's, there's, you know, uh, this is a large part of, of people's financial, um, future, whether buying or selling or what have you. And so it's, you know, the, the more information they're armed with the better. And, and so to, to get kind of get back on topic here, you know, the big things in, in our market are a light, like what you said, it's, it's just the inaccuracies in, in the data, um, whether it's value or, or how it's listed or, you know, one thing I'll point out here too, is that, you know, the data is only as good as the person that entered it. I tell clients this all the time. You know, if we narrow search res search results down, if, if people tell me exactly what they want, I mean, to a T, if I search based on exactly what they told me, chances are no properties would show up, right? Because the information is only as good as the the agent on the other side that input that information Great into point. the MLS, right? And so most agents, I, I'm going to say this, are lazy. I mean, that's what I've experienced in in my career is that there's a lot of lazy people out there. Not all of them, but there's a lot, and 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 they cut corners in, in entering information. And so if you get super detailed on the way that you're searching for your client, and the agent didn't get as detailed when they entered the information, their property's not going to show up. And so what you have now is you've got to do these very broad searches in order to kind of narrow down certain properties. And what do I mean by that? Well, you could have a client that, that really, the, their, one, their number one thing is they want an open kitchen, an open concept or, or whatever it is, an island in the kitchen or whatever. If you searched on that, and, and our ML, chances are you'd have very few properties show up when I would say the majority of them actually have what maybe that one feature. And so... The information that is syndicated to Zillow and the Redfins and all those other guys is the information that's input. And so unless you're having an agent on the other side, you know, no, you know, details like that, experience like that, you're, you know, you're going to have maybe not a bad experience, but not the experience you would have had with a professional that's educating the client up front. Because the, the first thing the client's going to say when they start getting property from you, if you're sending it to them is, why are you sending me all this property? I told you I wanted only an, a, an open kitchen with an island. Well, because you didn't educate up front. And I think that's part of the problem with, you know, these, these companies is that, you know, their information is, is directly syndicated. And, and so in that case, it's inaccurate as well. And, and so you need the professional guidance on that side. Um, can you think, I mean, I, we've talked about this estimates, we talked about, uh, you know, some of the, the data, you know, the, whether it's be an active or contingent or backup or what have you, am, am I missing something here that is? Yeah, no, I, no. I think no. I think you're right on target. I mean, it's garbage in, garbage out. So you know, based on you know, just a you know, certain you know, um, 
you know, in corrections that are, are basically, you know, entered when the property's put in the MLS. And I see for sale by owners do it all the time. I just had That's an agent uh, yesterday sent me a property, a screenshot on a property or a link actually, and it was a Zillow property. It was a for sale by owner. An investor client had actually called her up and said, hey, what do you think about this one? And, you know, she looked at it on Zillow and was like, man, I, I can't, you know, put, put it in the MLS, couldn't find it in the MLS. Well, it was a for sale by owner, but the biggest thing was they put the wrong zip code in. They put their own wrong zip code in. So basically nobody could find it. It had a map of something completely different, right? And so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're dealing with a lot of that. So let's just talk about some of the things that agents do, because that will uncover some of the things that I think are going to be the most difficult things, you know, for technology to actually replace. Um, it could happen. I won't ever say never, because believe me, eventually, I mean, you know, who knows what, what will take, take on, um, you know, uh, as far as, you know, what roles would be taken on by technology, but Let's just talk about um, let's just talk about the you know the open MLS for a minute, right? Because you know basically um, you know a lot of buyers are looking for open houses in the MLS, right? And one of the big things that I want to say is when you're navigating without an agent, you a lot of times in today's world you're knocking on the door, going up to an open house, and it's closed, it's canceled because. You know, you thought it was going to be open. The contract went on. The agent's not showing up. Your frustration, A, number one is where is everybody? And, you know, and, and if you're buying houses right now actively in the market and you've been out visiting open houses, I'm sure that you've experienced that yourself. So, you know, dealing with an agent or having somebody that you can communicate with, they're going to make sure that before that open house and go with you a lot of times in that open house, but making sure that number one, you're not wasting your time because time guys here is aggravation. Um, you know, I think the for, for sale by owner portals that are out there, there's a whole world. This has been something that's been happening ever since I've been in the business. It's a lot of different things you have to, you know, think about when you're doing a for sale by owner. You want to do that without an agent. Okay. How are they getting in your house? How are you qualifying them? You know, you're going to put a lockbox on your house and let an app, you know, open it up and claim that they're getting all the right information. You know, one of the biggest things that we do in the industry, a good agent is to make sure that number one, we have somebody, you know, there's a reason they've been qualified. We've gotten copies of IDs. We know who's going out with them. Um, we're checking things before we leave, making sure all your windows and doors are locked. You know, that nothing's been opened while somebody's in your house, making sure somebody's not roaming or, you know, um, you know, and, and that's just one aspect, the safety issue of the for sale by owner. But the biggest thing is guys, you know, you have to understand that we're driven by a lot of times by agent representation. So these buyers, you know, you're not even getting to them a lot of times. Um, you know, how do you get to them if they're under these agency agreements and things like, and I don't know how things are in California, but, um, you know, the question is, are you really saving money? I mean, that you have to decide for yourself and, and crunch the numbers, but I highly recommend you know, you know, before you go sticking that for sale by owner, you know, interview a couple of the area experts. I mean, there yeah, are sure. people, believe me, there are people that I guarantee are you've seen signs in your neighborhood that are neighborhood experts interview them. You know, I mean, there's nothing like interviewing the neighborhood expert that knows your buyer, you know, knows what they're looking for, knows what they can get for you for that, you know, property. And also, you know, has has some different, you know, um, reach abilities with, you know, coming soon, launch events, things like that, a whole bunch of things. I'm going to put some links for you guys in the show notes um, of the, uh, you know, uh, after we publish this video. Uh, but I also want to talk about, um, you know, with the seller staying on that, let's talk about the iBuyer programs, right? So, you know, the iBuyer programs that are out there right now are these cash offers. They'll give you money for your house. Um, and the market is very competitive right now. I think we even have a couple of them pulled up. Um, we had the Zillow offers. We have Realtor.com. There's OfferPad. There's a whole bunch of different iBuyer programs out there where basically, you know, you fill out your address, give them some details, what your mortgage is on your house, and then, you know, they'll have somebody contact you with a cash offer. And basically, they'll give you a range of what it is that you can, you know, uh, sell your house for and or what they'll give you and a lot of times guys you know there, there are different things out there now where you can actually rent back you can stay in the house you don't have to move um you know you have to look at these things if an agent is listening 
These are things you have to be familiar with because we're schooling our agents that when you go in on a listing appointment, you ought to just bring these things out to the table and let your clients know, don't hide from the technology, you know, bring out that elephant in the room because they're online checking it out. And, you know, we'll certainly know more about it than you do if you're not paying attention to what's coming down the pike. The biggest things that, you know, I, I see that agents, and I'll ask you, Jeb, I mean, are you guys into the 3D tours and the interactive floor plans and all that stuff? Uh, we are more so now than than ever before just because of COVID. So like where I am in, in Southern California, um, you know, it, I could get into to all the fun stuff of, 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 of real estate and, and how it's uh, changed dramatically in the last six months. But at the moment, we're not allowed to do open houses. So there's no open houses in our market. Everything is scheduled. Um, every buyer... Uh, entering a property has to sign uh, a disclosure with regards to COVID. Um, and, and so, excuse me. And so, you know, with all the changes that happened back in, wow, hold on. Excuse me. With all the changes <clears throat> that happened back in April and May, we, uh, we had to start using Matterport 3D tours, et cetera, because for a while, you couldn't even go into property. It wasn't it wasn't allowed. I mean, we couldn't show property. We weren't deemed an essential business here in the state of California, and so it it changed the the landscape. And so, I've always personally thought, you know, the three D tours and the Matterports and all those to be very clunky and not very user friendly in a lot of ways. But now we're doing them on every single property just because it allows for one every single you know we're verifying as agents that every buyer entering a property um, has 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 seen the photos online, they've done the tour, in addition to being qualified. That way, you, you know, you're taking the potential uh, non-interested buyer out of out of the equation. So the, the only real buyers that are now seeing your home are, are people that are actually interested in the property. Um, and so it, I guess in a way, it's, it's helped the business to some extent because now we're able to not only verify with with pre-qualification and 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 really have a reason to ask for a lot of this stuff but we you know we can verify through through tours and all of this other um, information that that's a real buyer that really wants to see your home because a lot of buyers aren't going to or I would say the majority of buyers aren't going to waste their time looking you know or are going to want to see a property having to jump through these hoops if that's not really a property they want to see right and so in some ways it's it, it's become a, a really good thing but I, I did want to touch on something you mentioned a moment ago about for sale by owners and, and i you know you kind of mentioned it but not and that's the liability aspect as a seller especially in the state of california selling your house as a for sale by owner i mean california is probably the most litigious state in in the united states with regards to just lawsuits in general. And if you saw what buyers and sellers had to sign in the state of California with regards to real estate disclosures, I mean, this is a packet of like, when it's all said and done, probably 40 to 50 pages of, of just disclosure. Um, you know, the protections are in, you know, that in itself makes it almost worth it to, to have an agent outside of all the other value that an agent can bring to the table. So um, I wanted to touch on that before, before we got too far into this. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I can sh I can share with you one of our contracts. I think we're just right there with you. I mean, we've got, you know, I think I've had 60 and 70 page uh, contracts with disclosures. No, no doubt about it. I do want to get to a couple questions here, too. So, guys, if you're listening, just be patient here. I do want to back up and talk about 3D tours uh, because, you know, we started doing 3D tours a couple years ago. We do them on every single listing, even if it's a rental, you know, if it's a, you know, a $500 rental a month. I mean, we still do it. We, we kind of, you know, believe in it. Um, and the reason is being because everybody is sitting at home and you can through these portals, if you're going to take advantage of some of these tech portals that are out there, they, they now will take your 3D tours right. and feature them. So, you know, what we found is even, you know, before the pandemic, uh, when you're out there competing um, you know, number one, you know, let's talk about some of the pain points of, you know, of a buyer, for instance. Uh, buyers are completely, yeah. bu bu buyers are completely reliant upon, if they if they have a, an agent, they're completely reliant on that agent. So, you know, and if that agent, you know, is busy or, you know, not, you know, someone that they should be working with, and that does happen, 
uh, what happens is, you know, they find out that they got to do a lot of this stuff on their own. So we believe in just kind of eliminating that process of depending on somebody else to show them a place in the best light. And then we go ahead and do those matter ports and 3D tours and interactive floor plans in every scenario because the buyers are sitting there making, you know, decisions on these tech sites, you know, at night at two o'clock in the morning while we're sleeping. And one of the things that we know that, you know, in order to get the most for your real estate, and I will say this is it's foot traffic, All right, guys, oh, if, it, you know, if the difference of you getting using, you know, tech over an agent is you'd be responsible for hiring somebody to go out and take these fancy 3D tours, the VR. Now we can use VR and look at our floor plans. Um, it, it, you would have to have professional photography. You would have to have staging advice, uh, you know, because there's certain, you know, um, you know, uh, emotional factors that turn on the switch when people want to buy and they take ownership. And what all this means to you as a seller is it means you get more money. So if you're looking at these iBuyer programs, you know, chances are a lot of those, you know, um, you know, those those sellers are really in different positions and times in their life where they don't, you know, really necessarily want need the highest value. They need something quicker or something like that. And there's products out there for everybody. But if you're trying to maximize, you know, the 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 uh, sale price of your home, foot traffic is number one. How do you get foot traffic? You don't have three pictures you know, of that don't make sense, you know, is, is the, you know, the front facing, you know, uh, um, aspect to your listing, you know, you, you take them down a story, you show them, you connect the dots, you show them how the floor plan is. You let them know, don't make them guess whether the floor plan will work. You have to put measurements on there with a lot of agents don't do anymore because people want to know online if their furniture fits and these 3d, uh, tours and, and these interactive floor plans, draw out the house uh, while they're taking photos. It will give the room dimensions, does a lot of things and really hooks them and saying that I'm interested in this property. Well, guys, when you launch that property, the more people that say I'm interested in this property, the better chances that you're going to get the highest amount of money, the shortest amount of time with the least amount of contingencies. These are just common, you know, common sense facts. You can have a hard time replacing that with technology, guys. I'm sorry. Well, I, I want to touch up. No, I, I mean you. You brought up something there, and and here in California, right? So we have a lot. We have a all of the buyer programs. In fact, a lot of them start in, in our area or test the markets in our area. And and I've had uh, close friends of mine um, actually test test the program, uh, put in property address, get an offer, and and where we were is is the offer that they were offered and what they could sell their house for was there was a big differential, right? And so, you know, we, we talk about this in listing presentations more often than not that, yeah, you can go online, you can get an offer for your house, but you have to understand that the Zillows of the world, the Redfins of the world, these guys aren't in the business of holding property. They're in the business of, of buying property at a price that they can then resell it and make some money. So you have to consider that if, if you know, if, if they're making you an offer and they're, and they're in the position to resell that property, they've got to buy it at a number that makes sense to turn around and resell that property. So you have to assume that you're not getting dollar for dollar what your property is actually worth in that case because they're not in the business of breaking even. They're not in the business of losing money. They're in the business of making money. Therefore, they have to. It's no different than than you. You know, if you ever watched the pawn shop shows that were on, you know, they were kind of a hit a couple of years ago. Is that you know these guys are trying to make money, right? the value might be more, but they can't pay that number because they can't then turn around and sell it to someone else and make money on it. And so the same is, is said for, for these companies. And, you know, I think that is what people need to understand. And if you're, you know, if you're a consumer and you need a quick offer, chances are, if you're working with a professional, that professional knows tons of investors that are willing to pay what that company would be willing to pay, maybe even more in some cases, with a cash offer, same circumstance. So, you know, we've had that here in California. In fact, I've had clients that that considered doing that. And I said, you know, well, what's the reasoning? Well, we need the money fast. Well, what if I was able to find an investor that was able to offer you that, maybe even more? Would you consider that? Yeah. And so the investor actually offered them quite a bit more and actually got the deal done. And so, you know, there, there's always, you know, more to it than meets the eye. I mean, people are just looking at numbers and thinking about, how quickly they can sell their property and get cash. But what, you know, it, it's, it's hard to convey sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, there's, there's, if you're working with an agent, 
that's a professional, chances are there are other solutions other than, you know, just taking the the easy route, getting less money and and what have you. I mean, you know, there's there's value to be added as a professional. And I think that's the biggest takeaway. I mean, if we're even, you know, if there's one takeaway from this business is that, you know, as an agent, if you want to be relevant in, in five years, provide value to your clients. I mean, that's how you're going to stay. 100%. Around. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Let's so. read a couple comments here. So uh, Sandy Joe says, uh, I feel like my clients come to me because I truly care about their investment, not only now, but long term. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sandy is an agent and, you know, 100%. I mean, it's, you know, um, people buy people. And you guys, sure. what we do, what, and, I, and I say this, you know, to our agents and, you know, um, what we do as real estate professionals is we become family and we become best friends to our clients because we are taking such a, you know, one of the things that we haven't talked about is the emotional aspect, you know, a highly charged uh, emotional aspect of a real estate transaction. Like Jeb said, I mean, we're dealing with people that have lost their loved ones and they're selling their home. They grew up in it. Uh, maybe they had a divorce. Uh, maybe they've lost their jobs and they can no longer afford it. And these are very sensitive issues. What we do, you know, what a good agent does that technology is never going to do is we are going to understand, number one, because we do this every single day of our lives, we're going to understand what your needs are. And we are going to see that we represent you. And that the biggest thing is, is that we help keep you focused. You know, I mean, we, you know, it's it's been a joke sometimes and we have clients sometimes that will apologize for the way that they behaved or treated us during the transaction because, you know, they said, you know, I wasn't really nice. I was really stressed out. And you go, we get it. You know, we understand that. It's nothing personal, but we keep it on track. We're the ones that talk them off the ledge. You're not going to get that with some of the things that happen in the transaction with inspections. Them not wanting, you know, sellers not wanting to fix things. There's somebody needing to negotiate that. Even from a seller's agent standpoint going, hello, guys, look, no, 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 no. You know, this is, we got to do this. You know, so, you know, for liability reasons, like Jeb has said. All right, let's move right along. We got a couple more here. Um, Sandy also says, now investor, now most investors in real estate agents who own rentals aren't using the MLS and there's no history to view and advise your clients. I think maybe she's talking about off-market properties, uh, wholesaling. Um, you know, yeah, we have a little bit of that. I mean, certainly, um, you know, it's eventually going to show up if it's an arm's length transaction on the, uh, the Department of Assessments and Taxation. But if you're looking for comps and things like that, wholesalers have been doing this for quite some time. Um, you know, it's, it's something we have to deal with. Um, again, as a, as a licensed professional, we have to tell people, hey, look, we can get you more money if we put it on the open market. Um, another one, um, but how do you explain to a consumer and make them understand that Zillow estimates are off? Sometimes they're not off. That's the thing. Sometimes they're pretty spot on. I think that what you have to do is you have to understand that if they are telling you the house is worth something, you have to determine if it's true and because it might be worth more. And, you know, what a lot of times people don't realize is there's conditions inside the house that can alter the price. And basically they're going off of the same comparables, you know, a lot of times that an appraiser is doing. But we have to really, you know, decide, you know, what I tell agents all the time is if you're going on a listing appointment, go see all the available inventory that's around that. That's true comparables to that property. That is going to help you, you know, bring to the table at that listing appointment what you're competing with in the competition and or what sold, maybe some photos of what sold and what some of the things are different about that house. So, you know, we just have to you know, do our comps and uh, make sure, you know, our competitive market analysis and make sure we're, we're on track. Got another well, one here. You know, I want to I want to say something on that. I mean, Todd, one of yep. the questions I ask in a in a pre-listing interview and or if it doesn't happen in the pre-listing interview in the actual interview itself is I ask the client, what do you think your house is worth? Right. I have my number. I come with my number. It's written down. It's and, and so I, I ask them before they'll before I, I tell them what I think. Um, always. I, I want to hear what they have to say, because I want to know if we're even in, in the same ballpark. And I will tell you more often than not, at least here in California, clients are, are on the low side of what they how they think their house is worth just because, you know, right now, because of the market, right, the low inventory, buyer demand, all of that good stuff. You know, and we have the ability to see what's pending, call agents, find out what properties 
went into escrow, while a lot of times we can, we don't know the exact amount, we have an idea um, based on conversations. You know, we were able to get additional information and and provide that. And and so, you know, again, I mean, if, if the Zillow number is accurate or is not accurate, it, it's a it's a conversation. It, it's a conversation starter to to um, to address the value of the house, right? I mean, you know, in my listing interviews, there's three things people want to know. What's my home worth? What am I going to do to sell it? How long is it going to take, right? That Those three and questions you know are it. the three, three questions right. that we address in every single um, conversation. And value is probably the most important to most because that's what they walk away with. So um, whether 100%. or not Zillow is accurate, I think is is a moot point. I think you having the data to support what you think it's worth is is the more important point. And that's why dealing with the neighborhood experts, people that are familiar with what the houses are selling for in that neighborhood, the ones that, you know, can can show you um, you know, truly what they think that you, they can get for your home and it's a supply and demand business. We're seeing things are appraising, you know, that are high higher on the high side uh, because there's no there's no inventory. And, you know, the other thing is, I mean, we've had a 15% nationwide on average, a 15% increase in home values year over year from 19 to 20. Right. One more yeah. comment here. Um, all right. Alexander says, agents can't be replaced by technology just yet. Step by step, the technology is getting better and stronger with smart and smarter every day. With more data collected, the estimates will become more accurate. Very true. Right. And all the processes will be simplified and automated. Pretty soon, in my opinion, there will be some market for agent 10 years from now, but it will be shrinking fast, which brings us to the last. Thank you, Alexander. And thank you, everybody, for your comments. But the last thing is, Jeb, where are the consolidations coming in play? Um, help me out here. I'm not sure I understand the, the question fully. Well, we know we're, I mean, things are going to consolidate, right? I mean, right. as, the, no, as okay. the competition yeah, so. gets stiffer, I mean, you know, uh, you know, you're going to have, you might have, um, you know, agents making it and some agents not making right. it. So where, what, what tips can we give? I mean, what, where are the consolidations? I'm, and if you want to stay in this business, what's some advice for the agent? Yeah, I'm going to actually, I'm going to reference Brian Buffini again. I mean, you know, earlier, I think this year, um, in one of the events I went to, I, I think he said, you know, his prediction is, is that we'll go somewhere around from somewhere around 60,000 brokerages to 5,000 brokerages within the next, I, I forget the time frame, but it was the next three to five years, just because of the consolidation in the business, because of technology. So yeah, you're, you're going to, you know, all of these companies now are in the business of selling, you know, getting buyers to be interested and then you know passing that along to a an agent and taking a percentage of the commission and it's a very easy business model with very little overhead so i think you're going to see a lot more of that type of business referral type business but not referral agent to agent referral from company to agent um and i think the 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 principles of the business stand true if you um, fortunately, I, I run a relational business. The 95% of my business comes from past clients, friends, and family. And it, it's because you provide value, you care, you show that you care, you continue to follow up, um, you continue to do the unexpected extras that, you know, long after the transaction's closed, that will always be um, a principle in this business. And I don't think that's going to change. So that that's my you know, my recommendation for anyone going forward, if you're new to this business, you know, it's about relationships. It's not about each transaction. It's not a transactional business. Yep. And I'll, and I'll add to that. I think, uh, yeah, some of that, definitely that, uh, some of the old school basics, you know, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust and, uh, people. So I'm going to give you a couple tips if you're an agent listening, uh, that I believe in as well. Um, I think that you need to stay in touch with technology, know everything that's available to your buyers and sellers and bring it out. Right. Don't hide behind it. Um, you know, make it a part, give them the reasons, the benefits of the reasons to use it and not use it. Um, the other thing is, you know, really focus on a market. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I see is agents trying to be too much to everyone. I think if you're going to have a bigger, you know, it's more important that you grab as much attention as you can in a very condensed area a market, stay true to that market, no more be the connecting aspect to that market and sell 
your clients on a lifestyle. When they're moving into a neighborhood, they're buying a lifestyle. They're not just buying a home. Be the one that can add the most value, and that's connecting them to the neighbors, connecting them to the local sub shops, the dry cleaners. Get to know those people, and you guys, believe me, I think Jeb and I both agree, you're not, we're not getting replaced anytime soon. Guys, Jeb, thank you so much, man. Appreciate Any parting it. words? No, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I think, I mean, I think that was solid. I think the information you've you've passed on could be very helpful to uh, to agents, whether they're new in the business or been here a long time. I think it's you as it's well, good man. Thank you, thank you, Jeb, appreciate for your it. time, man. And, and, and we're going to stay in touch, and we're going to follow this, guys. And uh, here's how it works, guys. Jeb and my uh, information will be in the show notes here. Feel free to reach out to either one of us. And uh, remember, if you like, Jeb also has a YouTube uh, page. We're going to put that link in our notes. Uh, feel free to check them out and hit the subscribe and do the same for us. And guys, if you're listening to this and whatever your favorite social media podcast channel is, if you would hit the like and follow us so you can get more content just like this. See you next week. Very cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks.